Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're well. I hope you're not too disappointed after last night. 0 0 draw against St Mirren, a game we would certainly have all expected Celtic to win. It's not a cataclysmic result. God, that was a fancy word, or anything like that. But it is certainly a disappointment. We have made our challenge to, to win the league that little bit more difficult, uh, having not won the game last night. But as I say, it just means that we move on now to Sunday, Boxing Day, away to St. Johnson, and that game just takes on an even greater meaning. Win that at all costs and get to the pit stop, refuel in January and go again after the winter break. Uh, that's how I'm feeling and that's the first and last time I ever use an F1 analogy on this channel. So enjoy it. But before we can get into all of that juicy on-field stuff, we must talk about the big issue of the day with regards to Celtic, which is the permanent appointment of Michael Nicholson as the club's chief executive. Now, really brief history lesson, Nicholson, who has been at Celtic since 2013, has been acting chief executive since Dom Mackay left the club in early September. Can't believe it was only September Dom Mackay left. It seems like a lifetime ago. But now anyway, Nicholson is going to take on the role permanently. Celtic confirmed this earlier today to much backlash from supporters. I actually don't really have much to say on this. I think we all kind of saw this one coming. If we're honest, Nicholson has been at the forefront of a lot of the stuff Celtic have done publicly. Over the last few months, the AGM is the obvious example. He was very much Celtic's chief executive at that. Um, you didn't get the impression he was just standing in for one year and one year only. The, the club were clearly gearing him up for that. I also can't say I'm particularly positive about Michael Nicholson's um, upcoming tenure as Celtic chief executive. I've only really got one thing, um, whether that be fairly or unfairly, to judge him on, and that is the whole Bernard Higgins fiasco. Thankfully, that's all over now, but I don't think he really covered himself in glory throughout that, not responding to fan messages, etc., allowing protests to go on and really not showing a lot of leadership. I don't think that whole fiasco uh, reflected well on him, Ian Bankier, or anyone else on that board. But equally, I don't really have too much energy to get too worked up about it, but I totally understand people who are really frustrated at the lack of imagination and ambition and, you know, foresee a, a kind of mo more of the same in the future for Celtic. I personally um, don't really have too many feelings about it. Um, I think it's more likely to come down to Ange and the players um, about how we get on over the next few years. But anyway, we will move on and we'll move on to last night. Obviously disappointing whenever you get a result last night, a setback. Uh, in recent times anyway, there seems to be kind of two schools of thought amongst the Celtic support. One is very much, um, you know, this is just a minor setback, we need to get on with it. And then you've got other people who are kind of throwing the, the baby out the bathwater, so to speak. Really, you know, everything's terrible, Andrew's a flop and all this kind of stuff. There actually wasn't as much of the latter going on after the game last night, which probably shows that we all, you know, believe in Ange and... It was just a you know a setback, but in general, when you look at Celtic's form recently in the league, it has been really, really impressive. We've won 10 from 12 in the league, just drawing those two games at home to Livingston and away to St Mirren last night, both 0-0. Now that's 32 points from a possible 36. That is title winning form. The difficulty with Celtic is that the previous seven games, the first seven of the season that saw us take just 10 points. We've been playing catch-up all the way through since those first seven games and Rangers aren't slipping up like they were at the start of the season. That's made all of these games coming up must-win matches for Celtic. And when you consider we're likely to be without key players, the likes of Rogic, possibly Kyogo, for the last three there, it kind of looks a little bit ominous, if I'm honest. So that's the bad news. The good news is that the winter break being moved means that we just have to get past St. Johnson for now. That's the final game before we can rest, recuperate, pit stop, etc. St. Johnson are really struggling right now. 
It's a game that you would expect Celtic to win, given their form. It won't be easy, but it's certainly a winnable match. And then we can get into the break. We can then sign players to improve the squad. We know the names that have been mentioned already. While the likes of David Turnbull, Yakimakis, James Forrest, Jota, of course, and maybe even touch wood, Christopher Julian can come back into the fold. The break will also be huge for the currently fit players who just seem like they're running on empty at the moment. And that's not a criticism at all. It's just, you know, what looks like a fact watching the team. We've kind of been running on fumes, I think, for the last five, six weeks. We've been winning games, but they've all been by one goal, I think, other than the Dundee United away game. They've all been really tough grinds, and that's going to have its effect eventually on the team. And I just think we, we reached that point last night. You, you look at the players we had out there, even guys we've looked in the past, like Rogic, didn't have it last night, and, and drop points are always going to happen um, when that's the case and when you're playing against a, a spirited opposition side without meaning to be patronising with a goalkeeper having a really good game. Now, as I say, the break will be huge for this Celtic squad. I think we've got three, three and a bit weeks of it. Ange confirmed last night that Celtic would be training in Scotland during the break. So we're not going to Dubai where we've gone for the last five or six seasons. A really positive move, I think that, from the club and from Ange, whoever kind of came up with that idea. I think it just makes a lot more sense when you compare it to to Celtic going to Dubai last year um, amidst the global pandemic. I think it's a much better look for the club. I know there was loads of other things going on last year and believe me, I'm not about to go away back into the Dubai 2021 trip um, because I do have plans this Christmas but I think it's a, a, a positive move for Celtic PR-wise. And I also think it's less risky as well. I mean, flying off to another country with what's going on at the moment, I feel like would would just end in tears like it did last year. So Celtic staying at home for the winter break. We have looked better after every international break so far this season. I think every single break we've had, and I think there was three, Celtic have come back and looked better. And I think that's due to the time the players that were left have had on the training ground. And when you consider that we're going to have the whole squad together, apart from those that are injured, on the training ground for three solid weeks, it, um, it could be really, really beneficial. And just spoken in the past about the fact that Celtic don't really train between games. We play that often that it's almost just recovery. So actually getting some time to work with the players and, and work on certain things, perhaps work on beating teams who set up with a low block and sit in and make it difficult. I think we'll really see the rewards from that when Celtic come back, especially if we have a Maida or a Hatati coming in and hitting the ground running. The issue is that we now have so little margin for error, no margin for error, ideally. Um, we really can't afford to throw away any more daft points like we did last night. And that moves us on to Sunday, which is now a massive, massive game. I said earlier, it's win at all costs for Celtic. It might not be a, a glamorous game at all. Going away to St. Johnson, the bottom team in the league, there's only going to be 500 fans there. None of them are going to be wearing green and white hoops. So it's going to be a weird, weird situation for the players to go into when you consider that they've been used to you know, 50,000 at Hamden last week and Celtic Park packed throughout the season. It's going to be a bit strange, but we just have to get in there, get the three points by whatever means necessary and get out of there. And I think however we get on in that game will probably determine how we all feel going into the winter break. I think if we win on Sunday against St. Johnson, we'll kind of, to an extent, forgive Wednesday night. We'll look at the bigger picture and we'll see the real positives. We'll be six points behind at the worst with two out of three Derby games to come at Celtic Park and numerous other fixtures, half a season basically. If we drop points, we'll be looking at eight points behind most likely and I think it it starts to look like a bit of an uphill struggle. So that's how important Sunday is. My concern about Sunday is how different is the team going to be to the one that played on Wednesday. I would certainly hope that Joe Hart would be back in. I'm hoping and praying that Kyogo would be back in the team. Uh, Rogic would be back to the Tom Rogic we want after kind of taking Wednesday off to an extent. I'd hope Juranovic and Greg Taylor would be back in the side. Juranovic probably in the right wing with Ralston behind him. I hope we just put out 
as strong a team as possible and just need to win this game and, and get into the winter break. That's how I feel at the moment. The wings are still a, a major issue for me. Um, the the lack of a striker is still a major issue. If Kyogo's not fit, I'll certainly be concerned. Um, but just find a way to win the match, Celtic. I've probably said that about 100 times in this video. Anyway, we're going to move on and leave the video for there. Tomorrow, we'll have Jackie McNamara on the channel previewing that game against St. Johnson as we head into Christmas and beyond. We're going to try and bring you daily content on the channel all the way through the next few weeks. Obviously, the winter break coming in early has changed our plans a little, um, but it's nothing we can't solve. And as I say, we're going to try and have varied content coming through for you. Um, if you've got any kind of ideas of things you'd like me to chat about in a video, then just let us know in the comments below. And if it's a good one, we may tackle it um, because we're going to have a lot of spare time until Celtic um, next kick a ball after Boxing Day on January the 17th. Don't forget to subscribe to 67 Hail Hail as well. We are right on the cusp of 23,000 subs. It would be amazing if we could make that before Christmas. You guys and girls can certainly help us out with that by subscribing. And we're back tomorrow with Jackie.